Vonage has been around for a very long time, and I'm going to go through this uh, slide deck talking about where we started to where we are now. And starting April 1st, we'll see a little bit different uh, Vonage in, in the field, but not going away from what our roots were of uh, just being a software as a service company. I usually don't like to talk about these, but Vonage has been around since 2001. Um, some of the things that are really important up here is one, the, the $1 billion in, in acquisitions and then the over $1 billion in revenue. Um, and I'll get further to um, the 20 billion minutes of uh, terminated and originated minutes that we do globally and how that helps us stay stable um, in a world that I came from Windstream, uh, and obviously we know what's going on over there, but Vonage from a financial perspective is very healthy. Not twice. So here's the evolution. And the start of where we came into enterprise versus where we are now is really important because this Vocalocity platform uh, is, is the roots of what VBC is today. Um, when we pivoted from purely residential in 2013, we, we started acquiring companies that, had, that really will end us at the place where we think we're the, we're the strongest company in the software as a service communications platform, in the, in the world, really. <coughs> um, acquiring Telesphere, and then i and introducing SmartWAN and Nexmo from 13 to 16 really kind of gave us the entrance into the enterprise space, and then continuing to build on, on 2017 and 18 with Contact Center, which was, at the time, it nice and contact, and then in 18, last year, we acquired New Voice Media, which, along with the messaging APIs and all of this, these different developments gives us our, our, we own the whole stack. So any way that you're gonna communicate with an end user or your end users are commu com gonna communicate with your customers, we're in charge of it all. And right there you can see the pivot. So I think that Vonage, prior to 12, had like six consecutive years of less and less revenue coming out of Resi. <laughs> so we started purchasing companies that were in the enterprise space in 14 and pivoted really in 13 and 14 to drive and, and use that revenue that the residential customers were creating as the springboard to purchase companies that would bring us closer to the enterprise. Um, and as you can see, as we've been declining in the residential space, which again is we're, we're ter terminating all those minutes, which is giving us the ability to peer and keep our costs in line, which keeps us from not going bankrupt. Which again, you know, a lot of people in this room, I'm sure, has sold Windstream or know what's going on over there. Me personally, I've I've no I've been impacted. Uh, and then the reach that Vonage has now. So if you look at the uh, the different offices as well as having over 2,200 employees nationwide, we have a lot of talent, we have a lot of resources, and we're really truly an enterprise play at this point. And you know, disruptive innovation. Uh, I don't know if anybody else had, uh, had Vonage back in 2001, I know I did, and I thought it was great to make free calls to India, <laughs> or free long distance in general. I was uh, living in D.C. and my parents were in, Mar in uh, New York, and it was 25 cents a minute that was not good in 2000. So <laughs> how does Vonage help you as an agent uh, differentiate and future-proof what you're doing in the field today? We are living and uh, giving the current environment of who's hiring and who's coming out of the workplace and integrating older folks with millennials and different types of communication that are happening. I uh, look at Nate when I say millennial. Um, and how people like to communicate with each other. Uh, the customer experience economy is going to be what's driving, call it from now till 2030 probably. Um, by, and by 2020, people are going to be making decisions and buying decisions off of that experience. When dealing with, uh, say, Marriott or someone like that, you, you go into an app and you're like, oh, well, I want to make a book a reservation. If you call after that and you have a problem with it, and they don't know what you're talking about, you get immediately frustrated. So team, partnering with a company like Vonage that could have complete integration with any kind of mode of media that you might be using is going to be integral for, for businesses in, in the next 10, 10 years, call it. 
So again, experience, there's, there's some stats here. Um, customer, companies that are gonna ex excel at CX, which is customer experience, as well as employee experience, are the ones that people are gonna learn work at and be a destination. Whoops. So what makes a great experience? It's really the better that you can communicate with somebody, the better the experience is gonna be. And <laughs> given people's preferences and, and how they might wanna text or use a bot or call in and, and be routed correctly, realistically, is, is what's gonna create somebody with having a great experience. I, again, I'll go with Marriott. I'm a, I'm a big Marriott guy. Whenever I call in, they know who I am. I can text them, I can text the property, I can communicate with them easily, and it's contextual. And what I mean by contextual is like, all right, if, I send, if, I'm, if I'm texting them and I call, the person on the phone will get that information because it's all integrated within their business tools, their CRM, and their contact center. So really, it's, I don't have to start over. All right, so here's, here's different ways, and, and I keep on talking about different modes of communication into the business. Um, these are the different ways companies are trying to create a better customer, a better, better customer as well as a personalized employee experience. What, what the other stats are saying is that hey, um, if I'm a happy employee, I'm gonna be providing better service to my end users. Again, the, the, the happiest employees call it Google, um, there's movies made about people that are really happy that work there. Um, Google, I'm not necessarily Marriott, I'm not sure. But I know that companies that are on the cutting edge of technology are gonna wanna attract new talent and keep old ta older talent happy in the way that they're working every day because they're, they're proud of the product that they're representing. So, that's it. Here's how they're, they're meeting all these experience needs. There's APIs, there's CRM, there's uh, integrations and collaboration. There's, there's clouds on clouds on clouds and everybody's got an, a, an AS that they can say. Even so much as sales as a service or enabling desktop as a service. Stuff of that nature is, is popping up all over the place. But if they're sitting in disparate systems and not communicating with another, one another, it's completely useless and non-contextual. And contextual meaning like there's no context behind the conversation or the communication that's happening between the two, between end user and customer and or carrier and customer, provider and customer. Sarah is here, local in the market here, channel manager. Um, and I think wins are very important, so thank you. If we do have a half hour. <laughs> it is a long presentation and uh, everybody loves long PowerPoints, right? Um, so hello everyone, I'm Sarah Chacon, I'm the channel manager here for the state. Um, my specific focus here, although I support partners and your customers all over across the country. Um, I also like to introduce our team, obviously we know Greg, he is the national partner manager for TCG. We also have Josh Ingram, who is a director of strategic um, opportunities, and then we also have Mike Shute, who is um, one of our direct sales people. What's interesting about working with direct sales, uh, like Josh and Mike, is that we collaborate together. Um, so we're supporting your customers and your opportunities in a different way. Um, so we're really going through and doing great presentations and demos, hands-on support. Um, the nice collaboration is just a, a great way to support and uh, make sure that we're thorough and, and providing a great experience. Um, a great win I like to talk about is actually one that Mike and I worked on. Um, it was one that came to us, um, it was like November 15th. We closed it on November 30th for 1,017 users. Um, for a large uh, 237 location uh, retail food chain, and we're just getting ready to activate all of those. And uh, that was a Ring Central customer that we took. <laughs> so we're very proud of that and uh, made that partner over $37,000. Um, I'd also like to say that in channel, we equate over 80% of total revenue in the company. Um, so more companies and more companies are moving away from that direct sales model to either just channel or the integrated approach. And we're really seeing great success with that clearly at 80%. And um, 
you know, very honored to be here and excited to be um, one of the vendors to be able to present today. We like doing a great job and uh, providing great support. And as far as also revenue goes and money that we've paid, we literally paid millions of dollars last year to our partners between upfront spiffs and also residuals. Um, so we are partnered across the entire country. We are also in Canada, the UK, obviously it's our global map. Um, so unlimited calling across multiple countries as well. So really excited to get to know some of you and continue the conversation. Um, the couple of points I like to hit on to is that we install very quickly, have a written SLA on that. So we guarantee up to five locations and 100 users under 30 calendar days. Our national average is 14 to 17. Um, so we do guarantee that. Um, we also have a written 5.9 QoS uptime guarantee. Since we're BYOB, if you sound like you're talking from the bottom of a swimming pool, we're to blame. And we're not to blame because we're only as good as the infrastructure we're writing over. So we do have a QoS device that we can put in place um, that we have that 5.9 guarantee. Uh, we also pay really well and we're really nice people to work with. And we're local, we travel, we go on site for customer meetings. I was actually at a partner uh, customer this morning before coming here. So happy to do whatever is necessary. Sarah, I have one more quick question. Mm -hmm. So as you were talking about how you're flexible, right? You know, you have flexibility in your, in your offering. So if, if you have a customer, for example, a small office, 12 seats, um, and they need managed Wi-Fi to be included in the solution, are you guys open to doing that? We do. We do not do managed Wi-Fi. If now, if they're going to put the QoS device in place, that's going to be doing their load balancing and monitoring. But as far as managing the circuit itself and the router and, and all of that, that, that is not something we do. We completely leave the infrastructure to partners to sell it, install it, and you know do the services on it. We do what we do best, and that's voice. I just saw a guy, Lee Burke, walk in. We talked to him about that, I think. Comcast. They have a very good product, and he's an engineer. So uh, it, introducing, I mean, really kind of, this is the, the, the one Vonage, if you think about different products that we have. The contact center is the new voice media, and this is our own stack. This is everything that we own and we develop upon. Our contact center, which is the Vonage equal Salesforce, probably the, not, not probably, the tightest integration with Salesforce in, in, the, in the world. Um, number one purchased on App Exchange uh, for Salesforce. Uh, and actually, the user interface is actually in Salesforce. So I don't want to t take anything away from the, the momentum we have at TCG and Vonage. Vonage definitely still equals Salesforce. But we have, we have more that is, that is coming in terms of how we can integrate with all the different productivity tools as well as CRM. Um, and here is the, here's the stack. You see, which is our uh, VBC platform. My first slide, I talked about the work velocity. Um, the book, the book Velocity purchase, which was the beginning of the pivot to business. We've been developing that Book Velocity platform into BBC and continuing to make it equivalent to whatever the stuff that we're, we're all probably used to in the Broadworks servers. Um, and, and really going feature by feature saying, all right, we need to develop everything that Broadworks has because like, eventually, you know, we had an opportunity to purchase Broadsoft, I believe. And when Cisco bought it, it was like, all right, well, this is all going to change for everybody soon. And we can see it if anybody works with any Cisco bars. They're, they're already trying to pivot to broad cloud and say this is the only way partners are going to get paid. Um, that being said, the beginning, say 2003, when we bought that, our, the, the first platform, Vocalocity, continued to develop it. That's, that's where this all started and creating this one Vonage as, a, as the, the leader in in software as a service communication, in com communications, sorry. Um, so here it is. We've developed and, and we have all the integrations for the guys that are around the circle already built. And like I was saying before, 700,000 developers that will continue to develop different things that might plug into our UC or contact center, um, as well as our programmable communications, which is the, the next mobile platform. Um, and then having it all sit on the public cloud um, specifically AWS gives us an advantage and flexibility and elasticity to, to spin up or spin down like, like if anybody's selling uh, well, no, you know, virtual machines. Our ability to get, like Sarah said, to get somebody installed and a new uh, customer running is 
equal to getting a new VM spun up onto, uh, onto AWS. Uh, and then our global carrier network is another advantage that we have. One, because we, we terminate all those minutes. So, did anybody ever sell 800 origination back in the early 2000s? Sure. Yeah, best thing ever. Um, so we don't, pay for, we don't pay for termination with other carriers. So that's a, it's a cost advantage for us for being the size that we are. Um, and then we can control quality across the, the call path, which other folks that, that in the programmable, programmable communication world uh, don't have very good voice quality from what I hear. You said you wanted to I was going to say that a good way of looking at how the CRM integration works is that I think all of us have been in a sales role before we are in our existing lives. I still am. Uh, we use Salesforce. And the number one thing about getting salespeople to enter information into Salesforce is it's a priority. Um, so this way what's happening is across a, each user is allowed to have up to 11 devices associated with them. Doesn't matter where they're at in the world and what device they're talking on, it's capturing that data both incoming and outgoing. Um, and so it's basically like a receptionist in the background doing like translation and transcription. So that's going to associate customer contacts and accounts with that information. Also when a call is coming in we're even going out, it's going to pull up that account information um, to give you an idea like, oh, this is the customer, this is what we talked about last time, there's not a delay, and oh, let me look you up. Um, and it's extremely, all of them are free, with the exception of just a couple. Salesforce is one that it's $5 per user additional. So for that type of integration and just ease of use, and then also from a um, you know, administrative standpoint for companies, it's outstanding to get a, just a better productivity um, overview of what's going on with their employees, especially remote workers and salespeople. <laughs> when all these things are talking together, you get good, you get good data, good actionable data for when that uh, rep or person might leave, or for, for handling any situation that may have to do with uh, a CRM, or if, if you have an engineering firm that's using Slack, you can go and quickly ask a Slack question, but it's all saved into one repository. It's all, it's all on a single pane of glass, which is really powerful. And that's, again, differentiates us from, from someone, say, like Ring. Um, it's, they do a good job at UCAS, but they don't own their own stack. They're trying to. Um, and like I said, we started in 2013 on this venture, on this vision, and I feel like the them going out and purchasing whatever contact center company they just purchased is, is them trying to catch up. But I feel like we're the leader at this point. We need them to be good because we need competition. And so do they. It makes Dan's life much easier when there's competition. Yes and no, right? Um, so we're already on to slide 18. And I think we had 10 minutes? You got a little more time. Oh, OK. All right. Just want to make sure we're all right. Be so respectful. again, this is a different way to look at. And you don't. Uh, We've, I think we've probably done the digital transformation story to a lot of people in this room before. But the, the thing that you have to remember, or I'd like you to remember, is that when, when coming to Vonage, you don't have to jump in with two feet and say, all right, well, we need to, to get everything you just, you know, yes. There's, there's entry points, and the entry points can be contact center. It can be the programmable communications, like Vonage Reach, which I think impressed everybody at the fisheries uh, event that you had last year, um, as well as the unified communications, which is what, what it's our table space that's we're going to we're gonna we're gonna win on that, and we're gonna continue to to make the customer stickier for you guys and, and your partners um, with programmable communications and contact center. Um, and here is our our, our brag slide um, to, to Jackson Hewitt. The, the first slide is, is mostly UC. I think the second one is is Nexmo, and the third one is uh, is uh, the new voice media who has some, some very large right. customers throughout. So US. contact center, um, API integration, yep. and then of course unified communications. Yep. Like if you've ever texted with your Uber driver, that's what we do. That's part of the integration that we provide. That's a good way of looking at it and, and to associate. I think everybody's familiar with using Uber. So that's us. Yes. When you're texting or you get a phone call, it's grabbing a, a voice API from, from Bondage and making the call to that. Exactly. Right, because back in the day, it used to be actually like the writer's phone number and the driver's phone number, and then people would harass each other, stalk each other. <laughs> uh, this way, it's a ghost. It just appears, and then it's just for that ride. As soon as the ride concludes, that number goes away. So it's just a temporary number to communicate for that ride. And if you think about like the way APIs work, is that it's great. There's there's voice APIs, SMS APIs, video APIs. It's grabbing that communications channel 
and using that to communicate with the customer. So that's, I mean, if you think about the, the developers, again, 700,000 developers that we have, the, the ability for us to pivot and, and be flexible, like Sarah said before, is just, the opportunity is, uh, I don't even know how to equate it in the billions. <laughs> um, and then Sarah was talking about before our 5.9, our uptime guarantee. Um. SD-WAN. It's SD-WAN. Yeah. That's a great way to, I think everybody's familiar with SD-WAN. It's a low cloud device. Um, it's our edge mark. It's created just for Vonage. Um, so you're not just going to get, again, the, um, the visibility into your network, but also the load balancing and uh, monitoring. But what I like about the monitoring is you can see, not you see all your different carriers on a scale of zero to 10, but you also get a nice screen of what are people doing in the business? Are they uh, watching Facebook videos, streaming Pandora, have a data intensive weather app running? Um, so what's gonna be critical in their business? And these are the, the, the different, why Vonages? Uh, hopefully you've, you've noticed and you've heard Sarah. We want to be a trusted partner. We want to be easy to work with. Um, and we, we own our own stack. So again, from contact center to, to unified mm -hmm. communications to programmable identifiers. Call it my, my cell phone is going to be my identifier. I'm going to probably port it to Vonage and it's going to be the only thing you have to contact me on. Um, reliability. <clears throat> ability to get you up and running between you know 14 and 17 days. Um. Well, and project management and support too. You're yeah. probably going to get to customer service on there, but we've been rated very high in our customer support category, and part of that is because of our project managers. I stay on. Um, the partners can be involved in as much or as little as you care to be. Um, every partner is a little different, but I stay on through the whole project. I don't necessarily need to be, but I'm always reading in the background, so if something needs to be escalated or pushed forward. Um, that's what I'm there to do. Our escalation and support paths are also very defined, and we're able to share that list my vice president is even on it so if you love me or hate me you know who to contact um, we just want to have lots of conduit both for you to have support and the customers to have support without having to call the ambiguous toll-free phone number yes it is yes all of our own employees within the United States so call that's correct <laughs> yeah, we don't have, speaking of $61, we don't have a minimum. We obviously need one user <laughs> per account, but we don't have uh, a minimum as far as that's concerned, like a 10 or 20. Uh, but we do obviously go into the thousands of users, like Jackson Hewitt that was on there before. Um, that is, oh, what, like 5,000, yeah. 6,000 users? 5,500? Yeah, yeah, give or take. It's a lot. Whatever. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. So we're able to support anything that's needed. And again, future-proof. Uh, the only thing that's, that's changing right now, and, and you, uh, I look at all the, the folks that, uh, that were PBX, I think, selling PBX is that, is that everything's changing. And the, the current environment for the IT professional is probably above their own head at this point in terms of what's what they're dealing with from a software perspective, from a hardware perspective, from cloud to any, all the AASs that I, I was talking about, that we've been talking about. Um, they're, they're not gonna be able to keep up with it. So to future-proof, you guys as consultants can bring us in and, and allow us to help with different parts of a project, whether it's, again, anything within the stack, programmable communications, texting and, and such, like Vonage Reach, Contact Center, or uni Unified Communications. There's never been a better time. Sarah talked before, dedicated, dedicated everything. The, three, the, the two guys over there and Sarah here in Florida are, are, are excellent. I hope that, uh, I think the, the TCG folks would agree. Um, we pay well, we, track, we want to track your progress, and we want to continue to grow with you. Um, and then again, our, our ability to install quickly um, and continued dedication to uh, the customer experience. So if we're not providing an, uh, an, an, an excellent customer experience for your end users, uh, please call us out on it because we want to. 
And um, on the administrative portal too, that speaking of additional help is that there's a help button literally on every single page. So if a customer's on there and they're just not finding something, rather than having to just call us, they can type in what they're looking to, add a new user. On there, it's going to give them literally like step one, you do step one, then it's the arrow is step two, step three. Um, also, it takes you into our business website where they can create their own help tickets and then they can chat with us. There's always the window that pops up, hey, chat with us. Uh, but they can reach technical support on there um, in addition to a lot of, you know, again, just multiple conduits to get support and um, have uh, transparency into that, not just one way. One more. And again, the one bonders platform, all the different ways to, to come in. Contact center, which is new voice media, all the different integrations that we have that are if, if you're starting a conversation with your customer about their communications needs, start with the CRM, start with the, the productivity tools. Again, we've had great success in talking about deals with with uh, with TCG in our Salesforce equals Vantage uh, mantra which is like the TCG mantra, for, for, for what I think. Is that um, we have two minutes or you have a question? No, I, I, <laughs> I, I have a question. I have a question. So, you know, one of the best things about Vonage that you guys haven't touched on at all is the fact that you channel integrate. Can you tell them about your channel integration model and how that, like, works? I, yes, exactly. The integration between direct sales and indirect sales, right. So I did touch on that for a second. So, <laughs> but I'll go back to that. Right. So again, a lot of companies are moving away from that direct sales model. We're one of them. Um, we do the direct and indirect together. Um, so part of that that I didn't say is that direct sales is still doing a direct sales job. So they're still reaching out, prospecting, knocking doors, making their calls. So with our top partners, what we do is when we find those opportunities, again, infrastructure we're only as good as what we're writing over we don't sell infrastructure we love to give those leads back to you and we work together and then it becomes mutual so we're not just coming to you and saying what do you got for me what can we close but we're actually giving you business back and leads um, that we like to collaborate on together sometimes we're not even going to be um, the advantage isn't going to win but we're still able to give that over to you and then it becomes that really um, you know mutual benefit for everyone to work together um, but again with direct sales you know, Josh travels the whole East Coast, but all over the country as well, um, doing presentations and just getting in front of people. And I do the same thing. Um, and then again, when we have the, the collaboration on our side, they're just getting a better experience, you know, just more support and, uh, you know, all questions being answered. If I'm traveling, someone else is available and vice versa. Yeah, we think of the, the channel management portion of, of, of our Salesforce as being top of funnel, create the opportunity. And then as, as soon as we qualify it and we, get to, we, we know what we're dealing with, we, we bring in the, the, the hired guns to help you guys close it. Because one, you guys in the, in the audience have the relationship, uh, the direct sales people have the know-how. And they'll help you get the, get the deal from mm -hmm. you know, stage three to stage 10. Yeah, some of my best partners too, we've really, I wouldn't say condition, but we've worked together enough now that when they're going in to do an infrastructure evaluation, they're automatically talking about voice and asking those questions to help identify like, great, Vonage is the one to bring in, and then vice versa. So we're conditioned to start asking or to be asking questions about their infrastructure, which is important anyway, but also from the lead standpoint to get the partners involved and, and have that you know holistic collaboration across the board. And that is it. And we don't cannibalize from one another, which is great. So we don't have those internal arguments um, about, you know, oh, it's my lead, you know, between, you know, direct and indirect, which is really nice to be able to avoid. So you have a question? Yeah, I see one on a sheet here that you guys have over the top 15 uh, features. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that That's not because that's an a la carte product. It's just, you can do it as a standalone. You don't have to be a Vonage Voice customer to have that. Um, so it's something, there's just a few additional services and features that can be added. Yes, it's 40 features that are included in our standard price. Um, we don't do a tiered approach where it's like the associate C with so many features and the, you know, res executive and presidential. We give everybody everything um, with the exception of just a few things that they have to kind of pick and choose. Um, but it's really nice. I mean, and in, in including, uh, 
eight iOS and Android apps per user and then up to three physical IP addresses. So we don't have to go down the list and, and choose. We just give it to you and then depending on the uh, proficiency of that user, we'll determine how many of those features they're going to use or not. Yes. No, the uh, web launcher is included now. So as Greg was saying, that we're we're evolving quite a bit um, and having collateral printed. It's also that uh, April first, because we are not officially able to distribute that yet. Um, that that's the information we have available at this time. But web launcher is included. We also have a beautiful really great um, virtual receptionist console. She has a whole company, you know, are they out of the office, busy, out, you know, on vacation, um, all kinds of different things that can go along with that too. And those do not include additional charges. It's just in a right that on the admin portal you can give, there's a super user, administrator, a simple end user, and then also a receptionist. That does not include the phone. We are getting more and more into the world of virtual. Um, I work from home and I'm on a laptop, a cell phone, and a Bluetooth headset. And so I have an office with a desk phone. I never go to the office and I never use that phone. <laughs> so, and as we know too, that the phone is only as good as the service that we're providing to it. So for a couple of dollars more per month, you can add, we do EA Link, Polycom, and some Panasonic uh, wireless, cordless. And uh, that also ensures that we provide it. It's essentially like an insurance package. So we're solely responsible for supporting, maintaining, fixing that phone, replacing it if it fails. Um, so you're not just dealing with the manufacturer. No, fine. So you're talking about, you know, cell phones, you know, maybe not necessarily needing a, you know, hardware, you know, desk phone. How do you manage QoS and the cell phone and then the entire office is on the network? Right. So as long as it's on the network that the Edgemark device sits on, that's where the QoS and the 5.9 guarantee is going to come in. If you take that phone or laptop and you're in the field and you're on your uh, you know, T-Mobile or AT&T data, that's a different scenario. So if everybody's on a Wi-Fi, you have to have more than one connection to have an Edgemark device, right? If you're going to be doing monitoring and then also load balancing. So this way it's going to be looking at those. And then if, you know, I wouldn't recommend in any office that everybody's working off of like a 4G or just a wireless. Um, so you're going to have some sort of at least like uh, broadband or, you know, cable in there, something along those lines as well. Yes. Managing QoS out of the network. So the Edgemark device is going to organize the packets as it gets sent to our core. Right. So it's like, again, as long as that user is like on the network that we're monitoring, um, but you're going to want to have something else in there. It, I mean, if you have enough Wi-Fi to support, depending on the size of the customer, go for it. But we recommend it's like a 4G. Uh, to be more of like a backup um, or just for wireless, but there's still going to be some wired computers. But I mean, it just all depends on the, how they're set up. But we have a local engineer. He's great, likes to go on location too, is happy to answer questions as far as that's concerned and all of the other technical components. So I think uh, Dan standing here is our cue. So yeah. thank you so much for your time and consideration. We appreciate it. Thank you.